<laughs> What's up? I, I just watched your uh, conversation with Jesse Lee Peterson yesterday. That was so great. I think so old now. I haven't finished it. Yeah, I so the reason I went there is cuz uh Phil KOE sent me a video of you dogging on him for not having a lot of uh of views on YouTube. Mm. And so I uh I was like, "Well, wait, does she have a YouTube channel?" So I went and checked and like, "Yeah, you you have one. You just have haven't posted haven't anything posted in a year." For a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've got like all these interviews that I want to upload, but like it's just it's a pain in the ass because you have to uh, have to edit them, and I'd have to I'd have to actually be sensible and 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 do shit. Um, much yeah. easier to just like boot up the stream and just go, you know. Yeah. I do so, all this preparation and research and shit offline, uh, like off stream, and then like I'll get on stream and I'll do stuff, and then I'm just like I cannot be fucked to. <laughs> like edit and upload this video i just can't it's that extra bit of work but it's just like and it takes so long editing takes so fucking long yeah yeah i keep i i have a thing to edit with and every time it freezes after i've been editing for like an hour or two every oh, time it freezes on me i like i'm so close to just losing my mind <laughs> that's understandable that's so understandable. the last couple times we talked I, I heard you on Destiny's channel uh, talking about um, how I'm the weird conservative guy with uh, what is it uh, cognitive dissidence um <laughs> And we've yeah, talked okay. a couple of times about like what, what you like. You'll you ask. Didn't take any massive offense. No, I know. didn't. I didn't. I think, I think you're all right, honestly. I think I, you're an okay dude. Honestly. Yeah, you 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 said that as well. I I um yeah. We. I'm usually pretty honest about how I feel about people. If I thought you were an asshole, you'd know. Well, thank you. I I've uh, I've enjoyed my chats with you, and we. We talked a while ago, or we've talked a couple of times about like what it means to be a conservative or something like that. And every time, like you just ask me a lot of questions, and then you end up dipping off. And every time, I want to get to a point where you tell me, like you'll tell me that you disagree with me, but I never know what it is that you think these words mean, or what it is like you would use to define them. So I wanted to know. Well what, like, how I define political conservatism. Yeah, because normally it just seems like, it, in my experience when I have these conversations with people, because I think that you'll have, like, a better answer than everybody else. That's why I want to know, because everybody else, it just seems like they're like, well, you can't be a conservative because I think you're reasonable, or because you believe in science and you're not a conspiracy theorist or like just stuff like that. And I think like, seriously, like you think that like people can't be different than you as long as they're like a reasonable person. Like that seems, <laughs> that seems really odd. And you look into a lot of like extremism on the far right. And um, I figured you would have a better idea uh, uh, than most people as to how you would uh, uh, define right wing or conservative. Sure. So I guess uh, conservatism is a uh, a form of political behavior that seeks to preserve the institutions and traditions of. Uh, of the nation uh it can be somewhat progressive on occasion but if it if it does if it does uh if it does seek to change or evolve society uh in any fashion um it does so with uh you know strong ties to um uh it it, it only it only favors uh gradual evolution um 
and that gradual evolution has to happen along lines of sort of you know the, the same sort of continuation of these institutions um and stability it's against any kind of like radical change yeah, yeah. So ultimately conservatism is, is is seeking to preserve the current uh situation and sometimes even to go back i'm <clears throat> I think that like because I agree with problems with most people, they assume that I agree with them on the solution. And that's <laughs> I think that that's where we're going to diverge most of the time. Like my prescriptions are a lot of the times like a lot different than other people's. Like if we're talking about like uh you know, like yeah, I'm in favor of Black Lives Matter. I think systemic racism is a thing. I um you know, I, I believe in like, you know, uh, whiteness or white supremacy as a concept. Um, but I would look at things like uh, like welfare as being one of the bigger problems, like a low amount of uh, or a high amount of single parent households. Um, like those are the things that normally I'm, uh, you know, cultural problems like those are the things that I would be focusing on and things that I would want to fix first, whereas other people have a completely different uh, idea for how they would want to fix it. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we have this, I don't know, we have this argument a lot. Um, I think like, from the kinds of views you've expressed, you seem to me to be like relatively progressive, hold, you know, sort of values of sort of um, civil equality, civil rights for like marginalized people and minorities and recognize that like um, great social change does have to take place in order that equity can be achieved. Like that's a, you know, and that's a distinctly anti-conservative position. I don't um, know that I'm interested um, in equity though. Like. Sorry? I don't know how much I'm actually interested in equity. Can you tell me what you mean by that? Because um, I feel like different people say different things when they're talking about equity. I defined it the other day when we were on a panel together, and it seemed like half the panel disagreed with me when I said that. So, sure, equity is the um, is the idea that um, people ought to be able to uh, be afforded the same opportunity. Uh, in order to succeed. Okay. Yeah, I, I normally I, I call equality the same opportunities and equity the same outcome. Yeah, I think where people get kind of mixed up is like um, equality, I would say, is like giving everybody the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, so if you... Okay, say everybody needs everybody needs an apple to get through the day, right? And an apple costs a hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you got like you you know, you got one person with ninety nine dollars, you got a whole bunch of other people with ninety dollars, and then you've got like the other half of people who've only got ten cents, right? And you're like, right, well, to be equal, we're gonna give everybody ten dollars. Now the people with ninety dollars and the people with ninety nine dollars, they get to live another day. Right, because they've, you know, they've been treated equally with everybody else and given ten dollars. Um, but the people who don't uh, already have ninety dollars plus, uh, they don't get to live another day. They starve. They die. Um, and that's what equality looks like. Equity would be recognizing that people don't start from inherently the same place, right? They're like, we have a long history that stretches way, way back. Uh, that means that some people just, you know, by, by, uh, es essentially by misfortune of birth, uh, are starting off on the, on the wrong foot. And even that, you know, some systems within the United States are like currently discriminate as well. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I guess current discrimination, you'd fix that. But, uh, yeah, so to take the equitable position would be to say, well, you know, we have some people with, uh, we have some people with only 10 cents, some people with $90. Obviously, the $10 isn't going to cut it for everybody. Uh, and that in order that people can live another day, advance their autonomy, you know, 
continue to seek life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and what have you, um, we're going to have to do better than just giving everybody $10. We, you know, we have to, we have to meet people where they're at. That's, that's equity. Too. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I would have to be like a socialist or something in order to be interested in equity, right? I don't think you would. I think you just have to like give a shit about your fellow human beings. It's the whole argument about like um like color blindness and all that sort of shit, right? The reason people say <laughs> color blindness is fucking stupid. Um, because it fails to recognize the fact that like black people just are physically worse off. Uh, in, a, in a worse off material condition mm -hmm. uh, than white folks in the United States. Like, overall, anyway, there are some pretty poor white folks as well. Let's not forget. Um, but if you were, but, you know, you can't just say, oh, I, I don't, I don't see race. We're going to, we're going to do the same things for everybody because this kind of, um, this kind of gap is self-perpetuating. Like, so for black folks in the United States, one of the biggest gaps is in household wealth, right? Like the amount of money that, that is present in a household. Huge, huge gap between white folks and black folks. And how do you address that? Well, you provide, uh, you know, people need to get jobs, be employed, and, and make money in order to improve their conditions, right? Right. But getting jobs requires education. So, but currently in the United States, getting an education or getting a good education, getting a high quality education, one that can sort of match up to the kind of education that uh, white folks on average, remember we're talking about generalities here, um, have access to uh, in order to make, in order, in order to get that job and make that money. So it's a self-perpetuating cycle, essentially. You just say, I'm going to forget, we're going to keep everything exactly the same as it is, and we're just not going to be racist anymore. It fails to address the material conditions that black people find themselves in the United States. And that self-perpetuating cycle of not enough money to go to university, or not enough money to get a decent education, therefore uh, not enough education to get a decent job, therefore not enough money to get a decent education, and so on and so on and so on. That just that just carries on into infinity, right? It just carries on forever. And black people remain perpetually disadvantaged as a class within the United States, regardless of whether or not there is currently racism within the system. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but then I, I, so I guess- Is that a, state of, is, is that a state of society that you think should exist? You think that white, uh, black people should be permanently disadvantaged? No, I don't. I don't think they should be permanently disadvantaged. But like I said, I th like I think that um, it seems as though if we look at white people who seem to have all the same opportunities, um, obviously, like being born into different families and things like that, or you know. Um, into different classes or is gonna change that a lot as well but um it seems as though whether or not you're born into a single parent household is a is a huge um there's a there's a consistent correlation there with dropping out yeah. of school I mean, having two parents right pretty good Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good predictor. We could probably we could probably uh, raise the amount of um, uh, sort of raise the average wealth of the black household in the United States by somehow uh, making making it so that they're more likely to have both parents. We could probably do that. Yeah. I mean, from what I understand uh, on welfare, um, black people are disproportionately on welfare and. It makes sense that they say, well, if you have two incomes within this household, then you will make less money uh, on welfare. So, like, say you have three kids, uh, you're making, you know, let's say $2,000 a month. But as soon as you get a second income, you marry somebody. Now you have a second income within the house. Um, now, you're, now you're going down to $1,200 a month. 
Um, mm-hmm. It seems as though it's a disincentivization to actually have a second income within the household and therefore a second parent within the household. And I think fixing things like that um, would make a big difference within the black community. Um, and those are mm-hmm. like the sorts of things that I try to focus on is things that we already have in place. Like you and I have talked about the fact that I don't think everything's like inherently broken. I think we can just fix a lot of it. I think a lot of it's screwed up and I think we can just fix it. I don't think we have to tear the whole system down to build a new one. And that's like an example. You're talking about the abolition of capitalism. I mean, I simply don't agree with you because I view capitalism as an inherently immoral system. But sure. (laughs) (laughs) I just want people to be paid for the work that they do. That's what I want. That seems that seems reasonable to me. I just uh, it's it's beyond me how people can go oh socialism bad when literally socialism is just like you know you shouldn't you shouldn't have people siphoning money off of you because they happen to own the property on which you you're doing your work like I that's true but I I also like fundamentally believe in the idea of property and I think if I go yeah. invent something and I decide that I want to commodify this um this thing i should be able to decide whether or not i have employees how many employees i have how much i pay them i think that a minimum wage is a good idea um but I mean, outside possibly, of that right but you're still so you're valuing the fact that you, i i hate doing the fucking socialism argument but you're valuing the fact the fact that you had an idea okay and that you had enough capital available to you to to buy the property uh, on on which this idea for whatever product you're making uh, can be realized, right? Mm-hmm. That's your contribution to this product uh, project. And because you've made this contribution to this project, right? You think that for forevermore, as long as people are employed by you and make things in your factory, um, they ought to be giving you some of the value of what they've done and i think that that's fundamentally immoral you can disagree with me if you like but that's, that's i think the principle on which like uh, socialism is founded yeah i think i'm giving them some of the value of what i've done by allowing them to come work for me by giving oh, them okay. it, it, if i don't have that job there or or if everybody stops ha- having the products that they've made and that they've created or the services that they decided to provide and the investments yeah, what do you that think they they'll put do? into it. What do you think they'll do? Let's say we got rid of all private property tomorrow in the United States. All these projects, all these products start stop getting made. Sure, it's, it's pretty abrupt, so there'll probably be some rioting and shit. America would turn into a fucking wasteland. But after that, right? Things aren't things still aren't being made. There's probably still going to be some people alive, and they're going to want things. Mm-hmm. So they'll probably come together and make them, right? Sure. Like, and they have that option yeah. under capitalism as well. Well, not necessarily. Only if they have the capital to put up to be able to afford the premises or whatever that they need that they want to make things on um there's also a lot of laws in the united states that make just cooperative businesses really really difficult to establish they do quite well once they are established but they're very difficult to establish um in fact joint ownership is not a thing that's really allowed for in um uh like u.s tax law as far as i understand as well um yeah really so like how d- I I was under the impression that like co-ops were pretty easy to start. Like Vosh gives the impression that they're very easy to start, and I always think, well, dude, like you make a good amount of money, go buy a freaking McDonald's or you know some sort of franchise mm-hmm. and start a co-op in it, and it, it like yeah, I mean, there's def- there's ways of doing it, right? Like giving everybody uh, in the company a stake in the company, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, honest, honestly, um, I mean, I live in the UK, so US economics, um, I'm, if we go much further down this road, I'll probably just end up saying some dumb shit. <laughs> um, 
Like, okay. you know, I got, I gotta, I gotta be honest about like how much I fucking know, right? Okay. Um. So, but, uh, but, but, yeah. I mean, co-op seemed like a like a good like first step towards like what I would consider to be ideal. And if you can start one in the United States, fucking go ahead. You want you want an equitable democratic workplace. I feel rather than I mean, you love democracy, right? Yeah, it's I love okay. democracy. Yeah, democracy is great. Democracy is about people having a say in the way that they're governed. So it's 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 getting rid of the right of people to tell you what you do, what you should do, without you having any ability to um, seek redress, uh, issue grievances, or um, or what have you, right? Um, but that stop that stops the minute you walk into your workplace. Um, the minute you walk, in, the minute you clock in in the morning, your boss tells you what to do. If you don't do it, you lose your job. That's it. You're expelled from from that from that place. There is no democracy. Every business is a is is an authoritarian enterprise. In that, you know, everybody takes orders from the um, from the people at the top of the hierarchy. Yeah. And if you don't, you're removed. Yeah. But I mean, that's common in all sorts of places. I go on anybody's private property, or if I grow up in a family with parents, like, um, if I, mean, I if I go to a church, if I go to a, like it, pretty much anywhere I go, I, I'm going to be. Um, sure, but these are like personal. These are like personal social things, right? Which, like. I don't think you have the right to like infringe on people's autonomy by saying, right, I'm just going to come sit in your house now. Right. Right. But you don't need to go sit in somebody else's house if you have your own house, at least. Right. You don't need to go sit in somebody else's house. You do need to have a job. You're forced into essentially engaging in an authoritarian enterprise in, in making yourself effectively, um, I don't know what what to call it beyond a slave to the um you know to these authoritarian places that you go in order that you can give your labor so that they can take money away from you basically and give you some of what your labor has produced in order that you can survive if you don't do that you either live in crypto in poverty or just starve to death sure Okay, so back to the original question. So, sure. <laughs> um, I I tend to do that. I go off on long tangents. Um, so last time we talked, when I like described what values I feel as though fall within conservatism, you're like, "Hey, me too." Therefore, you're an anarcho-communist or something like that. And um, I feel as though the difference is whether or not you're right or left wing, whether or not you're like, I, I would define these as like right wing. I, I understand like if France and the labor and all of that, but like colloquially, I don't like, I don't like the left wing, right wing dichotomy. I think there are multiple political axes. Um, I think the most important of these are uh, traditionalism versus progressivism, a capitalism versus anti-capitalism or socialism as it's more commonly known. And, uh authoritarianism versus libertarianism right i think these are the most important sort of three political axes and but you can be you can, some of those at uh, you can be a lot of those at the same time and i feel as though some what? of those are oh, no i don't think you can i think that these are dichot i don't think you can be both libertarian and authoritarian i don't think you can be you can be libertarian on one issue and authoritarian on another but you can't be simultaneously these things. These all these things are opposed to each other, right? So wasn't one of them uh, traditionalism? Can't you be a traditionalist and a and an authoritarian? And uh, okay, okay, maybe you're getting confused here. Okay, so what I'm saying is that there's these axes, right? Mm -hmm. And people can fall sort of anywhere along these axes, um, and that it's the 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 you know the political compass is not a binary i also think that these axes are like 
probably insufficient as well. But I think that these are the three most important political axes that we should look at. I think left versus right is bullshit. It doesn't it doesn't really tell us a lot apart from sort of colloquial understandings of politics, right? Like people sort of vaguely understand what you mean when you say left, vaguely understand what you mean when you say right, but it's pretty useless for an in-depth political conversation. Whereas these values, authoritarianism versus libertarianism, traditionalism versus progressivism, capitalism versus socialism, I think that these are um, much better. Um, you could probably put like nationalism versus globalism possibly on there as well. Um, and I think these are much better and, and, and I think that if you look at any one person on the left, right, um, you can find a variety of positions along these other political axes, right? You can have authoritarian left-wing people, right? I mean, look at fucking, uh, you know, early Russia, <laughs> uh, sorry, early uh, USSR, early Maoist China, um, Vietnam today. I was trying to think of like, ones that are like still leftist because authoritarian places tend to sort of drift right over time. Vietnam Vietnam does okay, I think, uh, in terms of being authoritarian and still what we would consider left wing in a lot of other ways. And we consider it left wing because it's progressive in, in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but it depends which of those axes that we we sort of value. But yeah, so you can be all over the place, right? Whereas like, I'm a left wing person who is distinctly libertarian, distinctly anti authoritarian, because I'm an anarchist. Um, I am, I'm, I do, I do value some social traditions. But overall, I'm very, very progressive. I don't think that, you know, things ought to stay the way that they are, because they, they've been that way and things work, that would be conservatism. Um, I don't necessarily value tradition uh, for the sake of uh, tradition. If a tradition is harmful, I'd, I'd rather get rid of it than keep it. Um, and and I'm anti-capitalist, uh, which is probably what we would typically say is on the left. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I the way it, the way that mm -hmm. I understand it, and the way that like when I talk to other people with like poli sci degrees, it, and I like I've done lots of interviews on my podcast with like um, oh, sure. some they pretty know much better than me. Pretty big name people who have done like TED talks and things like that. And when I the mm -hmm. way that I've always understood it in the way that I describe it, at least the way it's understood colloquially. Now I say this, but when I get on Twitch, like it's nobody has any clue what I'm talking about when I describe this. So the way I understand it is right wing is supposed to be more about the individual freedoms and liberties. And then left wing is supposed to be more about collectivism, uh, equality or equity. And Wow, that seems really weird. That means the Nazis were left wing. In some ways. So, like, you're you're going to be <laughs> they farther... They far right in the Reichstag. I mean, they're definitely far right. Like, that's the, pro that's the problem with doing this. Isn't this basically the Tim Pool model of fucking... Like, as you go left, you get more... Um, you get more uh, sort of... Shit, what's the fucking word? As you go right, you get more individual... Collectivist. And as you go left, you get more collectivist. You more government on the left, less government on the right. Like, I mean, I I do believe in horseshoe theory, but I, I don't know what Tim Pool believes. I, I, I want less government. Yeah, well, I, it, I'm the ultimate of wanting left gov uh, less government. I'm a fucking anarchist. But it does. I want, I want like no state. It does seem as though that applies like almost everywhere whether you're talking about socially you're gonna be farther left wing the more you're the more you want equality and uh look at things from a collectivist view and the farther right you'll be the more you look at things from an individualistic view um the more you're like fuck everybody else as long as i'm okay everything's all right right you know i would think about right wing people uh, yeah, I think that like libertarians are some of the farthest right people. Uh, like uh, Ann Caps are the farthest right economically. Um, it, oh, Ann, Ann Caps are like borderline fascists most of the time. Oh, I think they are all fascists. I think they're all fascists. I think they're all fascists. 
but they don't yeah. actually know it because when you well, yes when you actually start getting them to describe their system it's obvious mm -hmm. that like it's just going to be like cartels and gangs running everything and they're perfectly okay with that as long as the individual is in charge and that that but the individual isn't in charge because right. these massive conglomerates would just take any agency away from each other it's feudalism yeah no uh, right-wing libertarianism is not libertarianism <laughs> like yeah it's an oxymoron yeah yeah it's it's yeah it's so i i yeah i mean it just ends up with authoritarian societies in which the uh the oligarchs have all the power and nobody else has anything they're just essentially slaves to everybody yeah but yeah, so like socially and economically or fiscally right now that those labels seem to apply in the way that I described them um, it, to pretty much everybody. And the closer you are or the more that you are uh, a, like willing to bend on some of them. So like if you're like a, a liberal but you don't want to get rid of all guns or something like that or like there are some areas where you're willing to – um bend on the individual Wait, I'm, on, I'm 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 very pro gun ownership yeah I'm very anti-state sure i was gonna say what, that what the, makes me a left winger uh well so fiscally um socialism well, anti-capitalism yeah socialism or communism yeah. these are very um well, they're recognized as left-wing political philosophies, yeah, but why are they left-wing political philosophies? Because they're collectivist because... movements, collectivist ideas, collectivist fiscally, for sure. And sure. they're looking to have more equality. Um, but neo-Nazis were collectivists, so... Right, the, they, fiscally, I would say that they were left-wing, but I wouldn't... Fascism is incredibly collectivist. Right. It's all about the unity of the Volk. Say that again. Fascism is incredibly, um, incredibly collectivist. It's all about the unity of the Volk working together in common cause and good, uh, you know, in deference to the state. Yeah, but I think if I, I don't remember what it was, I remember reading a book on this and, and feeling as though they had. This is literally individualism. the argument that Prager uses, uh, Prager U uses to say that Nazis are left wing. I'm not I'm saying that they're left wing. I'm saying that they're that within their collectivists, because it seems as though they were only collectivists as far as who they like considered human, like or, or who they gave personhood to. But outside, of, once you were inside of that personhood, then they had individualistic ideas within it i just I, i'm blanking on it right now um mm. i have a library on my oh, laptop no, it's absolutely that I a very find. collectivist philosophy what is nazism yeah nazism is a very collectivist philosophy yeah, yeah. i mean I, I would assume that like any um a, anyone who is looking at uh skin color <clears throat> or race or something like that would would have some collectivist ideas as well sure so like this collectivist versus individualist dichotomy doesn't really work for determining left versus right uh i i don't think it's going to apply completely across the board i i think that it's going to apply in some ways and not apply in right, other which ways. is why it's useful to recognize that there are multiple political axes and that the left right dichotomy is bollocks uh, no, I what I mean is that like just because you are right wing doesn't mean a hundred percent of the things that you look at are going to be individualistic and that the less that is individualistic, the farther towards the center you'll you'll be or if you're left wing, but the less like uh, collectivist uh, some things are, the farther towards the center you'll be. It's not going to, you're not going to, nobody looks at literally everything. Like you said, like you, you're in favor of guns, right? Like nobody's going to be a hundred percent of collectivist or a hundred percent individualistic. And again, I can't think of a more sort of individualist sort of philosophy than anarchism, really. I mean, yeah, the that's idea true. That we all ought to have access to the democratic means to 
decide our governance. Like, that's pretty, you know, we, we talk about communes and all that sort of stuff and looking after each other and so on. But like, ultimately, what we're looking for is like the, the maximum amount of freedom for everyone. Right? Yeah, which is what you would say is individualist. Yeah, that's true. I guess when you take it to the extremes, some of those definitions break down. Um, I'll have to look mm -hmm. back into it and see exactly because yeah all of this came from like poli sci classes that i took that i'm um i just don't, i just don't think that the left right dichotomy holds up like under any any degree of scrutiny i think it's a very very simplistic way of looking at the world um i think we have to recognize that people take a multitude of positions on on different on different topics and like yeah and so I think authoritarianism is bad. I think being overly traditionalist is bad. Um, I think capitalism is bad. I think um, I, I, I think we ought to have a balance between individualism and collectivism, that we have a certain amount of social responsibility, but that it shouldn't override the individual's rights to the point where their, their desires can't be realized, right? So I, I want to maximize freedom for everybody, which means that I want people to have the most freedom they can possibly have without infringing upon the freedom of others. Um, so those are like a whole row of like positions that I take that sort of put me relatively squarely in the anarchist camp. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but if you sort of like change just one of those, right? Like it puts me in a completely different camp. <laughs> like, okay. I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I, I, I feel as though, like, most of the time when i think of like anarchism i or like you anarch you're like a anarcho-communist right i mean i think people would probably put me in that camp because of my because of my staunch anti-capitalism but like it's not actually like super important to me what's important to me is like maximizing freedom for people and that means that um you know, I, th I think we kind of have to have democratic workplaces as sort of, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I often explain it as like the way my political ideology evolved is like, you know, I was, I was a dipshit anti-fascist who just liked punching Nazis because I fucking hate racists, mm -hmm. right? That's like, that's like how it starts. Um, you know, and my and my anti-fascism leads to my anarchism, leads to my uh, leads to people saying that I'm an anarcho-communist. But I really hate the fucking label communist because communism is commonly recognised to mean, you know, uh, like centralised state control. Um, and the original sort of the original sort of anti-fascists, I suppose like fought the communist party almost as hard as they fought the nazis harder in some cases um so i just yeah i don't know i have a personal revulsion for the uh, for the label of communist but i guess it fits really in 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 people's modern political understanding um yeah but that absolutely doesn't mean that i support um you know countries like the ussr or the dprk or whatever because they're heavily, heavily authoritarian. And my, you know, um, probably one of my main priorities is is that I'm libertarian not, and not authoritarian. That's one of the things that, like, is most important to me is people's, uh, people's freedom, people's autonomy. Sorry, that was a really long-winded answer. I guess I could have just said, yes, I'm an anarcho <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, no, I mean, uh, I... I... Like, I ask because when I think of, like, anarcho-communism, I think of it more as, like, a fiscal idea, but communism... Well, yeah, communism, for the most part, is a fiscal idea. Yeah. Yeah. But the anarcho is sort of... Uh, the anarcho being tacked onto that 
is is yeah. is saying more about it, right? It's not just a fiscal idea at that point. It's a it's a social idea. It's a yeah. And and that anarcho changes it from more of a collectivist idea to an individualist idea. So, yeah. um, I still think it's a balance between individualism and collectivism. Like I said earlier, maximizing freedom, i.e. everybody ought to have as much freedom as possible without infringing on upon the freedoms of others. Okay. Which I also think is a statement a lot of people can get behind, probably even you. How, how long have you been on Twitch? Um, I don't know, on and off about a year or so. Maybe a little longer. I, I've only been on for... Uh, maybe two months before I got banned. And I'm sorry, you probably shouldn't post about supporting child porn in chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, I, was, that was definitely a misstep. I, dude, I, I just to prove a point. I don't know if you watched my video on it, but I like just to prove mm -hmm. a point. Uh, while I'm streaming, I go and comment. I'm streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, so I send into my comments the same exact thing and it goes on to facebook and youtube and then mm. i go on to discord and post the same thing and i say i promise you guys nobody else will ban me twitch is the only place that will ban you for that like normally everywhere else they they care if there's like an outside harm so like if you're harassing somebody if you're giving fake news if you're uh, get, like, you know, spewing slurs, like, then yes, they're going to ban you or, or something. But with what I said, there is no, like, outside harm. There's no harm that happens outside of Twitch. Like, it might look weird, but there is no harm happening. Unless there's, like, a, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 I, what do you call it, a pattern over time to where I think, they... I think most platforms would take a stance against the advocation of child pornography. I think they would, honestly. Yeah, it's I, just like I, Twitch I, is easier for people to sort of like leverage action against you. And I, you know, I wouldn't be here if I thought you were serious in that comment either. Like, so it's like, it's, dif it's difficult to discern whether somebody's um, like telling a joke or like trying to make a point against somebody else's argument or whether they truly believe the statement that they're making from just literally a picture of the statement right yeah Eris like could mean anything Eris was on screen Kay was in the chat with me uh Kay fellows um she Eris was talking about a debate that Kay had uh earlier in the week where she was talking about how she didn't like um girls who were like 20 22 whatever eight, maybe even 18 but they look um really really young and then they play really young characters within pornography and she was saying like we should get rid of this or this is you know this is something that should be banned and so i was saying like well they are of age like they're they're old enough to decide whether or not they want to play a younger looking girl like it's it's their decision. They can consent to all of this. So it's not, there's nothing really wrong with it. And then I just said, like, I'm pro pedo porn. Like if this is what, if this is what pedophiles watch, that's legal and, and is, uh, within the age of consent then like, fine, they can watch it all they want. Um, but out of context, yes, it looks really, really bad. <laughs> so the, the argument is that you don't actually believe that that's like, that's like, pedophile uh porn basically i guess yeah i think that that's um pedophilia to be like yeah yeah which is fine it's whatever um no i'm not here to admonish you on that but i'm just saying like yeah uh i think all platforms are relatively arbitrary in how they how they use their tos especially twitch twitch can be very arbitrary youtube's very arbitrary um they'll take your channel down for Next to nothing, but they'll leave Steven Crowder up fucking years True. Uh, with his crazy ass racist rants and fucking racist Chinese person caricature, right? Like, he never fucking ends. I mean, so, do you think a bot got me or do they have, like, do you think somebody reported me? Because I, I don't know enough about how they, like, monitor their chats. Couldn't tell you. You might have gotten lucky and there might even have just been, like, a Twitch admin in the chat or something that only saw that comment. Like, it's it's really really difficult to say i mean I, the worst part is when i'm filling out my appeal i'm sitting there thinking like 
dude, what if this was, like, a mistake and they just <laughs> accidentally banned me? Or, like, what if, like... Because they don't tell you what, what you got banned for, right? So I get to go fill out an appeal, mm. and now I'm sitting there thinking, I really <laughs> hope what I'm appealing is what they banned me for. Otherwise, I'm just, like, reporting myself for something else that I did right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a real rock and a hard place. I mean, I guess you just have to... <laughs> I, I honestly, I can't give you good advice on on that. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, Twitch is so fucking arbitrary; it's unreal. Um, like, one of your best bets is just to get like a decent portion of the community on your side to appeal to Twitch on your behalf. Like, that's usually how it works, unfortunately. I mean, but, but how? Um, like, I mean, I know a lot of people are like adding Twitch on Twitter and stuff like that, but I, I don't. I don't know how because there's mm -hmm. not like ways to get in touch with them or anything like there's not ways to talk to somebody about this so yeah it is tough yeah and meanwhile you still got people on twitch like fucking red pill 78 and tori says which really pisses me off i'm not gonna lie probably I, shouldn't have q and on us on twitch but what are you gonna do yeah i i mean i i the even the stuff that like some of the more mainstream people like uh like lecture fan like i've gotten into it with him over like uh immigration a bunch of times and like in the end it just seems like they just don't want brown people in the country like it drives me crazy <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> I, I don't know uh i don't know what else i can say <laughs> well i i i've went back to chat being a chatter i i'm i my name on twitch now is uh definitely not tfpc so makes sense makes yeah sense. so <laughs> I'm, i was in uh uh kyle's uh chat when you were talking to him and that's why i was like i'm gonna hit vivian up and see if she'll come chat <laughs> when she's done with this well I need to go for I need to go to the bathroom quickly. Um so I'm gonna do that, but you should think if there's like anything else you want to talk to me about in the meantime. Give okay. me um, two minutes. Sorry. Okay. What what do you guys wanna know from Mix Vivian Wolf? Hey, all right, I'm back. Okay. What's up? I don't think I had anything else. You know, a good game that I should buy. Good game you should buy. Yeah. Do you ever play games? Mm. Um, not a lot recently. Um, have a look through my Steam library, see what I've got. <laughs> Do you remember the first time I met you? Uh, we were in like a prime panel. I told you I was like, "Yo, I'm a big fan. I listened to you a bunch on Destiny." <laughs> it was crazy, like just to like be on Twitch and like jumping on panels, and out of nowhere, like people that I know or that I've listened to for years just out of nowhere jump on, and I'm like, "Oh wow!" Like I've listened to this person a bunch. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty mad. a couple weeks after you... I joined Twitch, uh, the surfs followed me. That was, that was a weird one wow. for me. Like I sat there for a minute. It was like, what, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, Lance is really chill. Nice dude. Um, do you have a game pad? No, like, do what's you have... a game pad? Yeah. Like a controller. Do you have a controller that you use? Oh yeah. Or strictly mouse and keyboard yeah i use a controller then um i like for honor for honor is pretty good fun what's for honor is that like a racing game um it's not super recent it's a good few years old now but i like it still good um i said a racing like a... game sorry i said a racing game like a car game Oh, you want a racing game? No, I was uh -huh. asking what what Ferrana is. If it's a racing game, like oh, it's for honor. Oh, for honor. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry, stupid American accents. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's. I guess you'd call it like an arena battle game or something like that. Um, oh, that looks really. It's cool. got one of the most innovative fighting systems I've ever, I've ever played. It's really, really good fun. Um, it's like knights, samurais, and Vikings facing off against each other in endless war. That's that's good fun. Um, what else? I don't know. So, what kind of games do you even like to play? I play all sorts of games. Like I, lately, I've just been playing stuff like Among Us and Fall Guys and Rocket League. But I play a lot of like sports games as well. I play shooter games. I mean, everybody's playing bloody Warzone at the moment. Like nobody stops playing Warzone. So it's pretty good fun. If you like shooters, for sure. Call of Duty Warzone. Oh, okay. Go for that. I was about to get Battlefield, but I might get that instead. But I guess whatever the meme game is at the time is a good idea. Oh, it's a battle royale game. So doesn't that mean you start like with like fifty people playing, and then you just got to be like one of the last people left? Uh, in Warzone, yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Huh. Okay. I like battle royale games. They're pretty fun. That's that's my opinion. <laughs> they look intense, but. I, I've never played any of them. Like, but the shooter yeah. games that I played the most were, like, uh, Gears of War. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, Halo. I played some Call of Duty, but... I guess that's not a bad idea. I'll try... I'll try Warzone. Yeah, the worst part about getting banned is that like I, I my community was growing so fast, dude. And then mm -hmm. all of the panels that I was running, if I I could like try to keep running them, but nobody would be allowed to stream from their end. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to do that, right? Like the whole point is that you're setting up content for them and then they get to just come on and Yeah, I don't stream when I'm on panels. Not something I do generally. I stream. I stream my own content. I think it's important to have your own content on the go. You know? I watched your your stuff once. You were watching. Um, I think it was a bunch of British people. Maybe there were some Americans in there as well. But it seemed like it was Q and Honors watching the inauguration. I believe. Oh, yeah, I was sitting in a private QAnon chat because um, everybody else was watching the inauguration and I was like, I don't want to just sit here and watch the inauguration and commentate on it like everybody else. Like, what can I do that's interesting and different and plays to my strengths? And I was like, I know, I'll do it. I'll do it while I'm sitting in a QAnon chat so that people can hear what QAnon people think of this this event. I think that was I think that was genuinely interesting, honestly. And um I'm not sure uh what the TOS says around that kind of stuff, but I would probably do it again. Yeah. Aren't you afraid Maybe like you're gonna with, like public get... publicly accessible QAnon channels in the future? Um, <laughs> Aren't you afraid yeah. you're gonna get caught or something like that? Like that one of them's gonna find well, out that you were doing it? <laughs> What's gonna happen? I mean, just gonna like keep, keep me from the channel, <laughs> I'll be like, okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's not that bad. I like. I thought that you were like getting in with some of these communities, though. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if if, if but 
all they do is like kick my account if they can even work out who I am, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I go in there going it would like with my name and everything. So if they manage to work out who I am, they boot my account and then I just join up with another account. Like it's no like um I definitely wouldn't do it with like something that I'd worked for ages to get into and that it would be difficult to get back into with a new account. Like that would be, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't put those kinds of like uh, networks at risk, but you know, something something like this where it's like relatively easy for me to get invited to, like it doesn't really, like I could just do it again with another account with no problems. So it was crazy listening to like everything that they were looking at as signs, like oh she has this on her dress, that means right. blah blah the blah. Fucking, like, was it like purple dress or something? It was yes. like the color purple. They were really obsessed over the color purple. I think. I I I was watching a replay, so I don't think I watched it live, but I I was watching for like thirty forty five minutes, and I because you hadn't. I I think at the time when I watched it, you hadn't streamed in a while, and so when I was watching yeah. it, like I yeah, I was really blown away by like how detailed they were in the way that they look at this stuff yeah well everything's a sign everything's a clue that's the problem with QAnon is like that's what people call like the gamification of QAnon where like its adherents are constantly looking for signs and trying to work out what they mean it's a very very weird way to look at reality but it's not um it's not unprecedented I mean yeah just go back and look at the shit that Alex Jones was saying about the Bohemian Grove or that people were saying about, um, you know, uh, satanic ritual abuse um, during the satanic panic or McCarthyism even. Like, how do you know if your neighbor's a commie? Yeah. It is, it's all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's been very much woven into the narrative of QAnon, which is like, they cannot help but... Um, but display the symbols of their of, of the cabal, right? Like it's part of their religion or it's some kind of compunction. The devil compels them uh, to to show the symbols of their cult. Um, and there's that saying within QAnon that's like their need for symbolism will be their downfall, right? Which basically is the idea that like these cultists are constantly using the signs and symbols of their cult and that's how you can identify them and that's how we're going to take them down which is just the dumbest shit <laughs> but like i don't know if, if you're a super secret cabal trying to hide everything behind the scenes why the fuck would you constantly be throwing out signs to everybody about who you are seriously like, like that's that's the thing i always think is like if all this stuff is so secretive like one why do all you random people in trailers know about it and two, why are they throwing symbols around so much? It doesn't make any sense. I think it would be... So while there are some people in trailers, um, I, I try and caution against that kind of not uh, kind of language around this. Um, like, nobody's immune to cults, and QAnon especially, um, you know, it, it pulls in people from all over the place. Uh, it's not just, like, whatever you might want to call them dipshit rednecks in trailers in the middle of nowhere like it's you know it's teachers it's politicians it's yeah um people in the army people in the army are or all, all veterans like as as there's there's a huge veteran contingent um middle-aged soccer moms new age kind of hippie wellness type people from los angeles like wow. a very big constituency um the biggest constituency is probably just evangelical Christians. Okay? That's crazy. Like all of the, all of the people that I know that are like, uh, conspiracy theorists like that, they're all like rednecks and, and people living in trailers. Like that's, um, that's crazy because like I, I go to church like and I, I'm involved with a lot of churches and uh, my mom's a teacher mm -hmm. like none of the people that I know um, anywhere else are conspiracy theorists. Although there are a lot of people at my, my brother's a pastor. There are a lot of people at his church that are upset about masks uh, being required. So. Hmm. 
I suppose I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, people in rural areas do seem to be like relatively more susceptible to this, uh, to like being right wing, and being right wing means you're more likely to be QAnon y, um, especially in the United States right now. Like the whole Republican Party has been pretty much inundated with it. Like it's very difficult to be, it's very difficult to be a Republican without believing some sort of like batshit crazy conspiracy theory that's died in the QAnon community. If you believe the election was stolen, you probably believe some QAnon shit, you know? Yeah, you, yeah, in order to be a Republican, you definitely have to be a conspiracy theorist at this point. Uh, especially if you voted for Trump, like, half the stuff he said was conspiracy theory stuff, so. Yeah, it's wild to me. Absolutely wild to me, but I guess that's, you know... <sighs> That's, uh, that's what happens when cults start getting out of control. Um, yeah, Destiny yeah. said on the panel with you the other day, like, uh, he's like, I, I thought there was no way in the world um, Trump was going to get elected. And I remember, like, telling people, like, yo, seriously, like, there's no possible way this guy will get elected. Like, I promise you. Hillary is going to win this easily. This guy's a freaking joke. Nobody's going to vote for him. And I was wrong the whole way through. Mm. Couldn't believe it. I think I just hoped, you know, I hoped. Um, but uh, I, I, I've, I don't know. I'm, I'm pessimistic. What can I say? Thing is, you guys haven't had like 12 years of Tory austerity to live through. So you're probably not as... <laughs> Not as pessimistic as the, yeah, the ability of people to continuously vote against their own interests, um, it it's endless. They will they will keep on doing it as long as they are convinced that there is some kind of outside enemy that they need, or even inside enemy, enemy within that they need protection from. They will vote for that strong man leader or whatever it is. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. I mean, I, I've even had conspiracy theorists on my show and, like, just wanted to talk to them and, like, see if I could, like, break down some of the stuff that they were talking about. But it was never fun because they would straight up say from the very beginning, like, yeah, I don't really believe in this stuff. Like, I, I just find I just think it's fun, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know a lot of people like that, but I don't know anybody who's like, really believes in this stuff so although i i do know a lot of trump voters i'm in georgia so i i suppose i do know some people who are conspiracy theorists just we don't necessarily think of them that way just yet okay Anyway, I think I'm going to go uh, get off and go and grab myself some breakfast and stuff because it's uh, about 11 o'clock here and then I need to start considering whether or not I'm going to stream today. I was thinking about it, but it's like, it's kind of, yesterday I did Jonestown and then the Source Family Cult. I need to find something that I want to sort of stream about. My daytime streams are just sort of like vaguely research streams in which I watch documentaries on things and uh, and while I'm watching the documentaries I'm like looking shit up and um yeah cool. trying to talk about them with regards to cults and whatnot but I I yeah but I don't know I don't know I don't know why I would why I would be looking up today. I think there was some weird cult in the where some woman ate a cat or something. Somebody was messaging me about it the other day. Maybe I'll try and work out what's going on there but yeah i need to work out what i'm doing for the rest of the day and i need to eat some breakfast so i think i'm going to chip off um but best of luck with the rest of your stream buddy and i hope you manage to i don't know somehow like uh if you can't get back on twitch i hope you manage to grow a bit here because you know it's really the, the whole situation really sucks i'm sorry for you dude i appreciate it thanks vivian yeah. No worries. And um, yeah, if you want to, if you've got anything you want to talk to me about, just uh, drop me a line. I'm always happy to have a chat. All right. I'm not doing anything else. Are you okay? So somebody sent me a message the other day saying that they think I got banned because I watch other people's streams sometimes. And I don't watch them live, but I watch them after they finish. And 
they they I don't said, think so. Everybody does that. That's what I uh, that's what I said. I was yeah. gonna say like, is it okay if I, I watch so. some of your streams sometimes? Because I, I apparently that's frowned upon according to this person. Like everybody does that shit. Okay. But I I suppose there's some people who could take offense. So I think it's probably polite to ask if like you know if it's somebody else's content. Um, is it okay if we just kind of like watch it on my stream? Like I guess technically they could probably chuck a dmca your way or whatever if they feel like it's not transformative content then yeah that makes sense yeah it, but i don't know i'd just do it out of courtesy but a lot of people just genuinely don't even care because like they watch like all the large panels and stuff on their streams right i don't see this it's not the kind of content i like to do just restreaming other people's content but yeah, I like to do it while I'm playing games. So if I'm playing a game, I like to be listening to something at the same time. That's really the only time I ever do it. And um, But like when I first got on Twitch, I met a lot of people by finding them like literally streaming my stuff while I was streaming. And so... Um, and then I found out later, like, no, you don't stream while people are streaming. You have to wait till after. I'm like, I don't care. Y'all can stream my stuff while I'm streaming. I, I don't give a crap. <laughs> like, you could easily go find it on Facebook or YouTube and stream it off of there as well. So it's it doesn't matter to me. But all right. All right. Uh, have a good Thanks day, Vivian. Come. Be well. Thanks. Bye. Okay, that was Vivian Wolf, um, in case you guys don't know Vivian, uh, she's got a YouTube and a Twitch, You should definitely go check her out. She's got a lot of very interesting stuff. I've enjoyed listening to her and talking to her a 